welcome to this video on single step redox titration calculations. We're looking here at unstructured calculations uh, that usually result from something like a titration involving potassium manganate 7. So what do we mean by single step uh, redox titrations? Well what we've got in this typical situation here is some potassium manganate 7 uh, which we put in the burette and potassium manganate 7 uh, is uh, usually has a known concentration and this is referred to as the titrant uh, we add that from the burette and we're waiting for some kind of color change in colorless to pale pink for manganate um, and then we find out the type that would give us the volume needed um, to react with this other substance down here which is known as the analyte something like Fe2 plus for example. And the reason this is called a single step uh, redox titration is that the properties of the analyte, say the concentration of Fe2 plus, uh, is going to be calculated purely from um, the number of moles of manganate that's been used in the reaction with Fe2 plus. So there's only one chemical reaction going on here. It's the reaction between the manganate in the burette and the Fe2 plus uh, in the analyte. So you might be noticing that that's very much the same as an acid-base titration. I mean, in fact, the calculation procedure here is going to be exactly the same as that you would use in an acid-base titration. Now, just for interest, uh, there are other possible titrants, potassium dichromate, potassium bromate, cerium sulfate, or famous cerium-4 ions, very strong oxidizing agent. Um, and the choice of the titrant depends on the substance that you want to analyze. Uh, and sometimes you may need an indicator, but potassium manganate 7 is self-indicating. So let's get into an example of uh, this. So here is uh, the text of the example. You may want to pause the video and have a go at the example question before we begin. Well, let's see how you got on. So these calculations follow a fairly typical pattern. Um, and it's worth just kind of having a look at the information that's in the question first and just extracting that. So we've got a sample of iron 2, um, and that's we've got some information about it here. Uh, sorry, I'll just switch pens and put that in blue. Um, and then we've also got potassium dichromate, which appears in the equation as the dichromate ion. And we've got some concentration information and some volume required to reach the end point, which is the usual kind of titration information. So the two substances we care about from this equation are these two. And so we can just make a little table uh, where we can gather up the information from the substances. So the dichromate, uh, we've got here 17.25 um, centimetres cubed, which we always try to work here in decimetres cubed because that's where our formula for calculating moles um, has that unit in and that's its concentration and then iron we've got a volume of 10 times 10 to the minus 3 um, and the concentration is what we want to try to find out so we've mined the question we've got all the information we need now we need to try to actually go about finding this concentration and as always with this we want to try to calculate the number of moles um, because once we've got the number of moles uh, remember, we can work out the concentration as just simply being number of moles divided by volume. Um, but to get the moles of iron, we can't do that at the moment because we only know the volume. So we need to first calculate the moles of dichromate, the so-called moles of the known substance. And when we do that, we simply multiply concentration times volume uh, using the same formula shown. And we find that we have used 3.71 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of dichromate during that titration. Now there must be, from the mole ratio now, we can see we've got six times as much iron as dichromate, according to that mole ratio. So to get the moles of iron, I just simply multiply that number by six, and I find that the value is 2.22525 times 10 to the minus three. So simply took the dichromate value and multiplied by six. And now I can stick that in the formula and I find out that the concentration is 0 0.223 or 22525 um, and 
if I want to try and give that and a final answer to the appropriate number of significant figures, then I'm going to go for, in this case, I've got three significant figures as my lowest, and so I'm just gonna go for 0. Point, uh, sorry, this should be 0. 0.22. Um, and so to three sig figs, uh, 0 0.223 moles per decimeter cubed. Let's move on to a more challenging example here, which is finding the formula of a hydrated salt. Again, feel free to pause the video, try and see if you can do the question, and then unpause to see if you were right. Okay, so we're going to go through this question. It's a little bit more complicated, so I just want to have a look at what we're dealing with here. And we've got 20.84 grams of hydrated iron 2 sulfate, which means we've got, which is essentially FeSO4 dot XH2O. We don't know the value of X. So it says, what is the formula of the sulfate? Is essentially asking us the question of what is X in that formula? What is the value of the number of moles of water that combine with one mole of iron sulfate in the giant crystal lattice. Um, so what we do is we do some dissolving of um, the hydrated iron sulfate, make it up probably in a volumetric flask to a total volume. We use 25 centimeters cubed of that solution and then we titrate that with some potassium manganate 7 to reach the end point. So we've got manganate as our oxidizing agent in this case. We've got volume and concentration here. So even if you don't know how what to do in this calculation, you always start in the same sort of way, which is just thinking about the titration that you just carried out. Um, and we know from that that the number of moles of, uh, we can, we, so we get the volume of potassium manganate 7, which is 15 uh, times 10 to the minus 3, at least in decimeters cubed. We've also got some volume information about uh, the iron solution. We use 25 centimeters cubed of that. And we also know that the manganate happened to have a concentration of 0 0.05. So our known substance, the one that we can calculate the number of moles for, is the manganate. Um, and so if we do that, we find out that we've got, multiplying those two together, 7.5 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of manganate we use. This time, to find, again, we're going to go towards the moles of Fe2+. Plus, and we'll see how we use that in a second. We're again going to use the mole ratio. Um, and we find here that this time the mole ratio is actually 5 to 1. And so we just need to take that number of moles of manganate, multiply it by 5, and we've got our number of moles of Fe2+, plus, which in this case is 3.75 times 10 to the minus 3. So just rewriting this with all the sort of basic information in, um, we've got to this stage of the calculation. And... We want to now try and go on to find out the formula uh, of that iron sulfate and that value of x. And the thing to realize here is that to get the value of x, depending on the value of x, the molar mass of that um, iron sulfate is going to vary. If x happened to have a value of 0, so it was an anhydrous salt, um, then we would simply have a, um, a formula mass of uh, 151.9. Um, however, if, um, in fact, uh, the value was say 1, then we'd have to add 18 on uh, to 151.9. So we need to try and think carefully about how we could somehow relate the information that we've got here um, to the molar mass. And we're going to use the formula that you should know for number of moles is equal to mass divided by the molar mass. And we can use that to extract the molar mass simply as um, mass over the number of moles. But this is the thing that we need to now be extremely careful about. Um, the information that we've gleaned so far was actually during the titration. And the titration involved 25 centimetres cubed of iron 2 sulphate. Now we do know the mass of hydrated iron sulphate. We know that the mass here was 20.84 grams. However, that was actually for 500 centimetres cubed of the solution. And so what we need to try and do with these numbers here is actually to work out 
the number of moles of Fe2 plus total. Now how are we going to do that? It's going to be related to the number of moles of Fe2 plus titrated. But we also need to scale up. And the factor we scale up by is a factor of 500 divided by 25. Because we use 25 and we need we had 500 in total. So we divide by 25 to get essentially how many moles in one centimeter cubed and then we multiply by 500 to get how many moles in 500. So once we do that we actually find that in total um, we have got a much much larger um, value of the number of moles uh, that has actually been used um, and in this case it just works out at 0 0.075 um, moles. So now we can actually use that using this formula to work out the molar mass. Now it's worth just noticing here that because we've got one iron in this formula here then the number of moles of the whole lot is the same as just the number of moles of Fe2 plus. So we can work out the, the molar mass of FeSO4 for XH2O. It's just the mass of that divided by the number of moles. So 20.84 grams divided by the number of moles, which is 0 0.075. And that gives us a molar mass of 277 0.87 and that would be units of grams per mole but I'm just going to leave them off for the sake of simplicity. So now we know the molar mass of FeSO4 and so we can work out the molar mass of XH2O. So we can just do 277.87 take away 151.9 which is the molar mass of FeSO4 and we find out here um, that we've got 125.97 grams per mole again. Um, so as we know the molar mass of 1H2O, we can simply work out the value of X as being 125.97 divided by the molar mass of 1H2O, which is 18, um, and we find from that that X comes out at 6.99 and so on and so forth. Now when this crystallizes, we're expecting here um, a whole number um, for x and so we would conclude that uh, the formula is actually FeSO4.7 H2O, so iron 2 sulfate heptahydrate.